In this video, we're going to do another example. We're going to prove the geometric sequence, which actually turns out to be very useful in, uh, uh, in many situations. I use it all the time in my work, for example. So first of all, let's remind ourselves of the method of mathematical induction. We're trying to prove a property, P, is true for all integers n greater than or equal to a. Um, so P of n is true. So we're going to start by showing that P is true for that initial value, P of A. And then the inductive step, we want to show that if P of K is true for some k greater than or equal to a, then p of k plus 1 is true. Right? If it's true for some value in the sequence, does that necessarily mean it's true for the next, the following value in the sequence? And if it is, and we know it's true for the first value in the sequence, we've proved our case. So this is what the geometric sequence looks like. And we're saying the sum from 0 to n of r is some base. So this is some number. That's hard to see. So r is just some number. And as we see over here, it can't equal 1 because look at our formula. If r equals 1, then we are dividing by 0. So that's not possible. So if we are taking the sum of some number to a power, this is often the case, like what if we have um, 5 to the 0 plus 5 to the 1 plus 5 to the 2 plus 5 to the 3 plus plus 5 to the n. There's an example of a geometric sequence. Or we could have 1 half to the 0 plus 1 half to the 1 plus 1 half to the 2, and so on. Notice anything to the power 0 is going to be a 1. Okay, so this, as I said, this actually turns out surprising, turns up surprisingly often. So now we're going to prove that this equation works for this problem. So we're going to do a proof by induction. And we're going to start with our base case. Now for a base case, we have to figure out what's changing, right? What's our sequence based on? And if you look at this, you might say, well, there's two variables. There's an R and an I and an N. What, what am I doing here? But notice R is a fixed value. It's just, it's a real number. So it's going to be 5 or 1 half. That doesn't change. What is changing is this, this N, right? We're going from I equals 0 to N. So that's going to be our sequence. And it starts with all numbers, all integers, n greater than or equal to 0. So that's what we're going to use for our base case. So we're going to let n equal 0. Notice it's not 1 this time. And as always, we're going to approach this with separate sides. So the left-hand side, we're going to plug in 0. It's going to be r to the 0, and as we said before, anything to the 0th power is just 1. So let's do the right-hand side. We have r to the 0 plus 1th power minus 1 over r minus 1. And this is going to be r to the 1st power, which we can ignore that. We don't have to write that. Minus 1 over r minus 1. And those cancel, and we're left with 1. So, since 
both sides equal 1, the base case holds. There we go. So let's do our inductive step. So we need to determine our inductive hypothesis. And recall the inductive hypothesis is going to be we want to suppose that this property or equality uh, holds for some k, some integer k in our sequence. So we're going to say, suppose i equals 0 to k of r to the i equals r to the k plus 1, right? We're replacing all the n's. The n is what varies. Replacing all the n's with k's. Minus 1 over r minus 1 for some k greater than or equal to 0. And again, that's 0, not 1, because that's where our um, sequence starts. And then we want to show, we're always going to suppose the same thing, that the property holds for some k in our sequence. And we're always going to show the same thing, that the property, hold, if it shows for k, then we want to show that it also holds for k plus 1. And we can simplify this, and this is going to be r to the k plus 2 minus 1 over r minus 1. And as we've discussed before, we cannot start with the equality. We have to pick a side and either start here or there, and then try to manipulate it algebraically till we get to the opposite one. Okay, and as we've seen before, I'm going to stick with starting from this first part, from the summation. So we are going to start here. So we're going to start with i equals 0 to k plus 1 of r of i. And you've probably got the hang of these summation problems by now. In general, we start by pulling off a term to make it look like our, base, our, our inductive hypothesis. In this case, we're going to pull off the last term again. Okay, so we have to figure out what would that last term be. And with all of these problems, if you're ever unsure, expand it. Right? General rule. So if we expand this, this is going to be r to the 0 plus r to the 1 plus r to the 2 dot 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 plus r to the k plus r to the k plus 1. And so this is the term we're pulling off. So we're going to add r to the k plus 1 right there. Right, and then we can erase this. And now, and this is by pulling off the last term. And then we're going to use the inductive hypothesis to replace this summation. So if we look, we know what we're supposing, and we can use this. And I'm going to plug that in back over here. And we're going to get that this is r to the k plus 1 minus 1 over r minus 1 plus r to the k plus 1 by the inductive hypothesis. And now, as we've seen before, it's just a matter of algebra. Okay. 
get like denominators and then combine then combine so this is by algebra and then we're going to go on, on the next page we're going to simplify this further so let's start by rewriting what we have so far and that is that the sum of i equals 0 to k plus 1 of r of i is equal to r to the k plus 1 minus 1 plus r minus 1 r to the k plus 1 r minus 1 and now as I said we can simplify I'm going to distribute um, this r into the this parentheses right here and so we're going to get r to the k plus 1 minus 1 plus r times r to the k plus 1 minus r to the k plus 1 all over r minus 1 and notice that we have a plus r to, the, uh, r to the k plus 1 and a minus r to the k plus 1. So those sort of cancel out. And we can rewrite this now as r times r to the k plus 1 minus 1 over r minus 1. And of course the reasoning behind all of these is algebra. And now, if you recall uh, the rules of exponents, we know that this is that this is equal to r to the k plus two minus one over r minus one. All right, we have r to the one times r to the k plus one combined. You add the terms to get the exponents together. And we get r to the k plus 2 minus 1 over r minus 1, which is what we were trying to show. Right? This is exactly, if we come back, this is exactly what we were trying to get to. So we've done it. And our proof is complete. So now we know the formula for a geometric sequence.